Hi everyone, this is Nikki. I'm so glad to have you here on the channel. We are going to be looking at watercolor cards today. These do not have to be complicated. I'm going to take you through five easy tips that will help you do better at watercoloring your cards, help you pick the colors, just know how to use watercolor paper in general. And we'll be using these butterfly stamps. They're called paint and stamps. So they're kind of made for this whimsical look. I will also use this Canson XL watercolor paper. And the reason I'm using this one is this is the best price point that I've found for a watercolor paper. So if you're a beginner, it's a great one to grab and you'll have lots of watercolor. I am going to start by embossing these images onto the sheet of watercolor. You'll see that I'm using a lot of powder, anti-static powder. I'm using a brush and I will link that for you later. But when you are using watercolor paper, you really need need to powder the area before you start stamping and heat embossing. Now this is going to be my first time using this stamp set. So you see that I'm rubbing on the stamp set and this is called stamp conditioning. This will make your ink and your embossing powder look so much better if you make sure that you've got any residue off the stamp before you start stamping. Now with this stamp positioner tool, I'm going to set up the whole scene for the stamp and then I'm going to use the plate on top to pick up all the stamps so that they will stay in exactly the same place. So once you have the scene in place, and I'm going to look, I'm not going to stamp the sentiment on this one piece. I'm actually going to cut that out with die cuts, but I'm going to make sure that it fits how I've set up my card so that it will fit right there in the scene. Then I'm going to use the stamp positioner. So this is the Altenew stamp wheel, and it's got a plastic face. And then I'm going to pick up the stamps like this and flip it over so that we can start inking them up. Now you could do this with your WOW embossing ink, but I want my images to show up on the paper. So I'm going to stamp with black ink and then we'll use our clear embossing ink over it. Now one tip is that when you are stamping on watercolor paper, watercolor paper is made to absorb liquid. So especially if you're wanting to emboss on it, you need to do the stamping a couple of times, which is why that stamp positioner tool is so much better. I actually stamp this image three times and then I'm going to immediately take it to do the clear heat embossing. And you see after the first stamp that if you know this black ink, you know that is not dark enough and that it is getting absorbed into the paper. So I'm going to continue on. This is the VersaFine Nocturne again and I'm going to do this two more times. Okay, here's the second time. You can see that image is getting darker. And then here it is after the third stamp. Now you could keep going if you wanted to make sure, but three worked perfectly for me on this. So now I'm going to use my clear embossing powder on this image. I like to use coffee filters to catch my embossing powder, but when you're doing a big panel like this, it would be perfectly fine to put down a piece of paper or something like that to catch your excess. So I'm going to tap this off really well, and then I'm going to look at it up close. I'll show you what it looks like. The image now looks a little cloudy because it's got that clear embossing powder stuck to it. And you want to make sure you don't have any little extra pieces. Um, I'm wiping those off with my finger, but I really didn't have a whole lot because I did such a good job powdering this piece. So now we just heat it up and you'll see I do front and back just to try to keep the paper from warping too much. That's not as big of a deal with watercolor paper because you're going to be adding water, which is also going to add to the warping. Um, I'll show you how I flatten out my panels um, after I'm done with them. You can always tape them down to try to keep them as flat as you want. But I tend to just add um, some stuff to the back of the paper later that helps flatten this out. Now I'm going to grab a water pellet color pan you can use if you don't have watercolors you can use ink anything but these water brush pens so this pen right here that I'm using has water that comes out and having this embossed image right here just makes like a little well for that water and so I can put the water in and then add little bits of color and that just kind of spreads along where the water is it's so easy and it doesn't go outside my embossing image because I've created a little wall with that clear embossing powder that keeps it right here which just makes this so easy. 
Okay, tip number three is to, is there's a couple different ways to color. So with this purple, what I did is I went on and put the water inside the image and then I dropped in the color. I think that gives you the best um, way to blend. But with this image right here, I did, I've already got water um, on my brush and I dabbed it in the color, and then I'm kind of pulling it up. I feel like I get more definition in the purple than I do in the teal by doing this. But I tend to go back and forth on how I do this. I just feel like you get more wispiness with the purple by doing that dropping in of the color. I'm gonna jump to our other card and look at this one because it has three butterflies on it. And I'm gonna talk to you about tip number four, which is how to pick colors. So when you are blending colors, you do need to be careful what you're doing so that you don't just blend colors that are gonna cause each other to turn brown or black or just look yucky together. So my favorite way, especially as a beginner watercolorer, was to use the color wheel and to pick colors that are next to each other, okay? So if you think of the colors in a wheel, um, the colors of the rainbow, you've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And if you make that into a wheel, red and purple are right next to each other. So they blend very well. They're very eye-catching. They look beautiful together. Okay, so you could have made all of these butterflies pink and purple. That would have been perfectly fine and an easy way to do it. You see that I'm dropping in teal now. So what I decided to do was to keep this card to four colors on the color wheel. So I'm picking four colors that are next to each other. So we'll be using purple, pink, teal, and blue, okay? And we're gonna keep it to those four colors, but because all of those go so well together, we can mix and match how we want. I decided to go teal and purple on this butterfly. Everyone loves teal and purple. It's a great color combo, and it blends really well because it is close to each other on that color wheel. Some purples, you have to be really careful how you blend um, in markers and other things, but watercolor purple to me is actually the easiest of the purples to blend. I don't know if you've experienced that or not but I really I really love how it blends um, on this beautiful butterfly and I can go over the purple and the teal and I'm not creating a muddy or brown mess there I'm just kind of creating a little variation in the color and for our third butterfly, I'm going to use blue and teal. And you could have put blue and purple. You could have done a lot of different things. But blue and teal were my plan for this butterfly just to kind of keep the beautiful colors going and wrapping around. So with this one, it, there's not as much of a definition in the color because blue and teal are so close to each other. Um, but it still gives you a beautiful butterfly look. So... To recap, color choices. I am sticking to things that are right next to each other on the color wheel. This helps me keep my colors from being too muddy and really gives a beautiful result that people enjoy looking at. So um, I am going to keep it this way. Now I'm going to add a few extra details and we've still got tip number five. So we'll continue on this three butterfly card and then we'll go back to our other card at the end to kind of show you some details I put on it. But I'm starting with metallic watercolor. I could use the exact same watercolor I've already been using, but I love how metallic watercolor gives you such a little bit of shimmer, which is so nice. And this is from Altenew as well. You can use whatever size brush you want. I'm trying to get color laid down. And I'm just kind of going in strokes. So I've got just a little bit of water and a little bit of color. And I'm going to go over my panel. And then I can make it darker after I've gotten that color and water laid down. This is called, this is tip number five. This is called a watercolor wash. And this is, it seems like it's going to be a big mess. The big tip is to make sure that you get some color down first. Then you go back and add more. You also want to keep your brush brush strokes going the same direction. I'm going to scoot in so you can see what I mean like about that. 
See how I'm keeping my brush strokes? I may go around the image a little bit, but I'm trying to keep everything very linear. And that really makes a difference when you look at it later. It looks like, because you may get some variations in colors, but they're in stripes of color. So just keep it very linear and keep moving. You want to make sure you get all of this done before the panel dries. It's okay if it does dry. You'll just have to go back in and get everything wet again. So I'm kind of going along. The other thing about this watercolor wash and the reason that I emboss these images is because it gives you that little ledge of embossing to keep from from accidentally running into your image. See how I've got this line right here that I can easily go around my image because that embossing is raised up. And so it gives me a little ledge to run into when I'm painting the entire background. And the reason that I decided to do this besides adding the shimmer was because the butterflies seemed like they would be, you know, the way this card looks to me, it looks like they're all floating in the air. And I think of like a blue sky behind it. Plus that blue is this, we've used it in this card already. So using a lighter version of it, it just gives, it just kind of makes the images pop out, I feel like. And on this card, I had already heat embossed the sentiment. So I can just go right over it and there's no problem because because that ink is protected. So I also love the heat embossing part because I like to not have to worry that my ink is going to run and that I have that beautiful edge to go over. You see that I turn this paper all different ways. I love moving it around because I wanna keep those linear lines. And so I tend to just spin the paper so that I can get everything filled in instead of um, trying to go in an unnatural way with my arm. Okay, here's how this looks with the first layer of blue. So I decide that I want this to be a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna grab a little bit larger brush just to add the color. I know I did my smaller water brush for the other, but this one I'm gonna use just a little bit wider brush. This brush is from Altenew. I'll make sure I link that for you in the description and getting lots of color. So I've already got a wet panel, which makes this a little bit easier. And now it's kind of like you're dropping in the color on the butterflies, you're dropping in some more color on here and it really makes it pretty easy to do like I said that embossing edge helps but I'm going to drop in some more blue color on this panel and I'll speed it up so I'm also sticking with going in the same direction as I did the first layer so see how I'm taking my brush across the paper in vertical lines you want to keep doing that as you add the second color as well just to keep that look it really um, you can get some brush strokes that look kind of funny if you do it in the wrong direction I really like just doing this linear pattern so this kind of card a watercolor card especially is a great card if you're worried about the ease of mailing something because you can keep these cards pretty flat and still have um, amazing detail by using this watercolor technique. The last detail I added was a little bit of acrylic white splatter. You can see I put this in a box so that I um, don't get the splatter everywhere and I just think those little extra white highlight details look so amazing on this card. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the other card where I completely forgot to put flowers on these branches. So I'm gonna stamp these on and not heat emboss them because I want to make more wispy looking flowers. So I'm gonna show you the wispy flowers and then I'm gonna show you how to keep a card panel straight. So if you warp your paper with heat embossing or watercolor, that you'll have an option to keep this panel nice and straight. Okay, so here's how it looks. You cannot tell that that's not heat embossed down there unless you're looking at this card very closely. But what I mean with the flowers is I knew with the flowers that they're so tiny that I was going to probably go out of the lines and kind of thought that might be a cool look for the bottom. So I just did that regular black ink and actually intentionally went outside the lines of these flowers because I thought it just gave it a really cool, different look. We've got our butterflies that are all in their lines and these are out. So you can do regular stamping with heat embossing. That's perfect fine depending on the type of look that you want. If these were heat embossed lines I would have that little ridge and it'd be a little bit harder to go outside the lines. It can be done but it tends to want to confine your painting to inside the lines which is why I like to use it. Okay, quick tip. You know, I told you that I was going to do something to make sure this was a flat panel. I'm adding double-sided adhesive foam to the back of the panel and it keeps your card front so straight. 
Hopefully, as I zoom in on this, you can see how straight and flat this fr card front is. I'm going to show you that same adhesive on the other card. So with this one, it's a little bit warped. As you can see, it kind of bending over there. This has an adhesive on both sides. So I'm pulling off one edge and then putting down that foam adhesive. This will be linked in the description for you. It is one of my favorite products, and it's so great with watercolor. Can you tell how flat that panel is now? All right, so here's that other one and how flat it looks. I just love how these turned out, and I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to review the tips really quick. Number one, to emboss the image on the watercolor paper. Number two, to add water inside that embossing line. Number three, to drop in color. Number four, picking the right colors. And number five, adding that watercolor wash like we did on this one. Here are some final pictures. Make sure that you hit the like and subscribe on my channel. That will really help me out. And I'm going to include a playlist at the end of this video that you might be interested in. So I hope that you'll check out some other videos on the channel. And I hope to see you back soon. Have a great day. Bye.